Hi, and a warm welcome to our Tacton Summit, Conscious Manufacturing. My name is Cecilia Hamrin, and I will be the host for our summit this spring. Our next, next keynote speaker is Irene Campogai, mm -hmm. and she's a PhD researcher at the Technical University of Denmark. She specialized in product configuration systems and mass customization solutions. Mm -hmm. Her expertise encompasses the automation of different processes from the healthcare system to the construction industry. And Irene's research has a clear focus on developing novel sustainability assessment applications and product architecture tools. So Irene is with us here today and talk about the imminent trends in sustainability tools. So a warm welcome to you, Irene. We're so glad to have you here as a, our next keynote speaker. So um, a warm welcome and whenever you're ready, you're good to go. Yes, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here today and to be able to listen to very interesting presentations also. And I'm uh, very happy also to, to be able to share my work with you. I have prepared a brief presentation and I hope that afterwards we can have a, a short uh, Q&A session also. Yeah, absolutely. So we're good to go. Thank you for attending this presentation. My name is Irene, and today I would like to introduce you to the topic of imminent trends in sustainability tools. But before that, first, I would like to briefly present myself. I'm a mechanical and an industrial design engineer, and I'm currently doing my PhD project at the Technical University of Denmark under the supervision of Professor Lars Vam. And in our research group, we have a clear focus on both mass customization and configuration systems in developing methods and tools. And that's the reason why we have been closely collaborating with Tacton for several years now. So in this context, we have identified a new need and we have a new research goal of developing configurators to be used as sustainability assessment tools. And why focusing on this? So first of all, product sustainability is a critical topic that fortunately is increasing more and more its presence in the media. And also on the other hand, users have now a clear demand to get more reliable and transparent sustainability information on the products that they are willing to purchase. And last, and most important, there are and there will be soon more sustainability legislations and recommendations. And this will push the need for new sustainability assessment tools in order to meet these new requirements. So in this context, we have identified two different approaches regarding these sustainability assessment tools. First of all, there is a need to guide these users towards more sustainable choices and also to help them think out of the box. And then on the other hand, there is a requirement to assess the sustainability level of these choices and therefore a need to quantify the sustainability of each of these choices. But what do we actually mean by guidance? So, First of all, providing these users with recommendations during the configuration of the customized products. So, for example, suggesting them to make the most sustainable choice. And secondly, showing alternative solutions to help them in this thinking out of the box process, which could be done, for example, through a numerical quantification of the solutions or a graphical representation, which is more user friendly. So overall, we are talking about using configurators as decision support systems for sustainability. But this guidance that we were discussing now, it's not possible if first we don't have an assessment of the sustainability of these choices. So in order to provide recommendations and alternatives, we need to be capable first of comparing the different options. And this is only possible through quantification. So there are different ways of quantifying sustainability. For example, life cycle assessment is one of the most valuable and popular approaches. 
But in any case, there are many different life cycle assessment methods. And it's important that each project will have an individual assessment to get to know which is the most adequate one. But apart from these sustainability assessment tools that we are discussing now that can be achieved through configuration systems, there are other sustainability measures in which configurators have already demonstrated to be very successful. So I'm talking about optimization of results. So for example, there are many companies that have already adopted the improving of waste reduction through configurators, or for example, avoiding the over-design of customized products. But now let's go back again to how to use configurators as sustainability assessment tools, and let's see how the system operates, which is relatively simple. So first of all, we have these users that they want to make their choices and they are guided and recommended with more sustainable options during the process. So in this way, we can achieve the automation of process, so such as getting comparative results, but also very importantly, we can automatically generate climate declarations according to the relevant standards, which is a very important feature. And all of this process is only possible thanks to the knowledge base, which fits the configuration engine. And this knowledge base should contain the information on our products, but also all the information regarding the life cycle properties of this product. This information is still very hard to obtain, particularly in some manufacturing sectors, but still it will become more and more accessible, mainly because of the introduction of new legislations. Now to finish, I would like to present you a couple of successful configurator cases to enhance sustainability. The first case is the Rebus project, which was a partnership launched by the Danish government and this project is public, so you can find more information online. The project was launched to automate the renovation of facades of buildings from the 60s and 80s, because there is a very high need. And hence, the goals were basically the reduction of energy and resource consumption and achieving a higher uh, productivity overall. So in this regard, integrating a configurator helped to automate the energy consumption assessment already in the design phase. It also helped in the reduction of waste production and in achieving a higher quality on the specific specifications and hence avoiding over design. And finally, it allowed the automation of different specification process which could reduce the lead time and therefore increase also the productivity. Here is a second case example from the construction industry. This is still an ongoing project and it's a very good example of a legislation driven project. So the thing is that Denmark's new governmental construction agreement has agreed on a maximum level of CO2 emissions by 2023 on uh, new building constructions. And this uh, maximum level will actually be reduced by 2025. So for this reason, there is an urgent need for tools that will promote more sustainable choices and also that will move users from traditional thinking to a new way of thinking. So in this project, the configurator plays a critical role in suggesting more sustainable solutions based on the CO2 emissions, and also on presenting alternatives to the standard choices. For example, by offering the lowest maintenance level alternative. But how have we been able to achieve this? We have applied the life cycle assessment methodology. And to do so, we have used the construction industry PCR 
which are the product category specific requirements to perform life cycle assessment. And finally, we are reporting our findings through EPD documents that are the environmental product declaration. And that was all from me by now. Thanks a lot for listening. And now I will be really happy to answer any questions that you might have. Yeah, so thank, thank you so much, Irene, for your walkthrough and also of your research and also sharing two actual cases. So uh, again, feel free to add questions in the comments field uh, if you have any you would like to share. But as you mentioned uh, in your presentation, Irene, the importance to determine the capability to compare different alternatives uh, through quantification, for instance, by life cycle assessment, which might be a big project in itself, if you mm -hmm. don't already have this data. But could you share a little bit more here how you have been working with this on an operational level and what to keep in mind? So, yeah, as you said, life cycle assessment must be, might be a very complex uh, project by itself. So this is not the only method that uh, we, can, uh, we can adopt in uh, such projects. We can, uh, we can uh, integrate uh, a different, uh, a different uh, perspective. So, for example, we could uh, provide uh, our products with uh, arbitrary sustainability scores instead of uh, quantified through life cycle assessment in order to have this uh, sustainability quantification. So we can simplify this uh, quantification. I think that the most important in uh, our project is to keep uh, very clearly what is our goal, what do we aim at uh, by adopting this sustainability perspective in our configura configuration project. And uh, also to be surrounded by the relevant experts. Uh, so companies or uh, the attendants uh, here are experts on the product itself. But right now we are uh, discussing about something that is very new. So we need uh, a different approach. We need experts on the, these uh, methods and tools. And also we need experts on how to uh, how to structure and organize this information within the current information of the product that we have. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. So here's another one. I mean, you we now been working with several products to use CPQ for for guidance as a decision tool, uh, decision support tool for assessment to be able to compare choices and uh, optimization of results with regards to sustainability criteria. So from your side, what is usually uh, the most challenging part? Yeah, so I would say that uh, not only in the sustainability project, but also generally in this kind of projects, the most challenging is always to, to find, to align the different uh, requirements from the different stakeholders involved in the project. So particularly in the case of a sustainability uh, approach, we are uh, talking about very different points of view. So I think that the most important is to have the right communication tools and to get the proper uh, people involved in these projects to, to, to be able to develop them. <laughs>